Hello everyone and welcome to the Sochi 2014 Winter Paralympic Games. It's day eight of competition here at the Rosa Kuta Alpine Centre and it is men's giant slalom day. There are three categories being raced today, visually impaired, standing and sitting. And we are just about to get the second and medal runs underway. Giant slalom decided over two runs. The combined time of those two runs will decide where the medals will go. The three categories are based on the athlete's functional abilities and you will see athletes with different impairments competing against each other in the same category and uh, this is made possible um, by a results calculation system. Now the weather, well, it's uh, warm, the visibility is good and uh, conditions, well we'll wait and see how it pans out on the snow. We have had difficulty with the wet snow rutting in uh, previous days of competition but uh, certainly over the last uh, 48 hours or so it's been slightly colder and hopefully the piste will hold up a little better. Now the results calculation system I just mentioned is based on a mathematical formula which is, was instigated uh, by the athletes many years ago and what it does it gives each class within a category a factor which is applied to the individual's real time and it gives a level playing field. And it's important to point out at this stage that the time that you will see on your screens throughout the races will be the factored or calculated time. So the finishing times is the final time. And let's have a look now at the start list for the second run of the men's giant slalom visually impaired. The top 15 go in reverse order and there are 17 competitors qualified for the second run and the fastest three well Jon Santacana was third fastest Jakub Krakow Slovakia second fastest and Mac Marku of Canada as you can see has over two seconds on the rest of the field Marku silver medalist at the Para World Championships Krakow the defending Paralympic champion and Santa Cana the reigning Paralympic world champion at Giant Slalom. So they're all there at the top of the pile. That's one of the forerunners just warming up before he goes down. And uh, it's set up nicely in this visually impaired category. But someone will have to do something very, very special to overcome Mac Marku of Canada. There are three classes in the visually impaired category, B1, B2, and B3. And we will explain each of those classes when the skiers are in action. Now, the second course set by Jordi uh, Cabonel Palou of Spain. 46 gates, that's three less than the first run and 41 turning gates four less than the first run so uh, they have added a little bit more speed to this second run well, the Canadians in fine voice Patrick Hebner of the Czech Republic will get the men's giant slalom visually impaired category underway. 15th fastest from the first run. Hebner skiing with his guide Miroslav Makala in the B2 class, which includes athletes that are unable to recognize a capital E that measures 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters in size from a distance of four meters while athletes with a visual field of less than 10 degrees diameter are eligible for this sports class now let's have a look at this course that was the bears brow the first major terrain change and uh, then they snake their way across this relatively flat section before they come to the hardest part of the track which is over the lake jump 
Now, in the visual impair category, the guide and the technical disciplines of slalom and giant slalom can be uh, no more than two gates in front. And Hetma comes to grief on the lake jump pitch. Just got bounced low in the line and loses his right ski. And that is the end of his giant slalom race. Let's have another look. He was late in the line there, very straight on that blue gate. Well, actually got caught on the inside ski and then loses the uh, right ski after hitting the uh, snow that's banked up on the side. Alexander Fedoruk of Russia and his guide Artem uh, Zagorodskiska. And uh, we picked them up just after the uh, Bears Brow. Now they're setting up for this pitch above the lake jump. Now Fedoruk goes wide in the line and uh, taking his time to try and negotiate. He's very different. Look how he's been bounced around in the turn. Now he's. Uh, off the steepest part and uh, stops the clock at 2.20.65. And the guy talking all the while to his athlete. And the skiers just cut off left after the late jump rather than taking the final pitch of the deer jump, which is very, very steep indeed. They follow the track that was used in the Olympic Games in the men's giant slalom. And it makes for a much better course, much better rhythm. And Federick will set the first time and it is 2.54.96, the combined time. Now, the next skier out of the hut is Michael Beledic of Slovakia with his guide, Filip Motika. And Beledic has just under, well, just over one and a half seconds, 1.53 his advantage over Federuk at the top of the run. Uh, where in other categories we have more than one skier on the track at any one time the visually impaired category it is uh, the start after yeah previous skiers finished now not a cap sets his athlete up for this lake jump pitch very icy very rutty and Beledic a little low in the line, but still making it decent turns. He's skiing in the B2 class like uh, Federuk and Hetmer before him. Now 2.20.65. Well, he's found a lot of time. He's found uh, three and a quarter seconds between the top and that intermediate step on Federuk, who currently leads. Now, and Beledic leapfrog up the standings possibly try and sneak inside the top 10 well he's nearly home now he will set a new best time and it is 7.9 seconds inside the time of Federic 2.47.06 good ski from Michael Beledic of Slovakia and his guide Philip Motika That is the winner's enclosure. And this is Gabriel Juan Gorsic Ipes and Josep Arnu Ferrer Ventura of Spain. They were 12th after the first one. Their advantage over our leader, Beledic, is 1.91 seconds. Gorsic Ipes had a bit of a big mistake in the first run. And he's a little late in the line here. Getting a little bounced around. That's better. Good over Bears Brow. Lots of chat between guide and athlete. Fascinating to listen to their different communications. 
each pair has a different way of communicating. Now, Gossi Ibez, uh, much better. The best we've seen so far, if he can hold it together down this late jump pitch. Oh, he's late in the line, but he gets it back. Good skiing, and well, that's reflected in the time. Four and half seconds, 4.67. The right side of the clock, Gossi Ibez. It's quite tightly bunched between 12 and 8 so a chance for him to significantly improve his standing if we can maintain this fine form between here and the bottom less gates on this course than the first course and Gossipes will lead by 4.88 good run 2.42.18 the uh, next for the new best time at the bottom. Now, this is Maciej Frezel, uh, Marek Kubaka, sorry, of Slovakia, and he skis in the B1 class. Now, skiers in this sport class are either blind or have very low visual acuity. By way of explanation, their level of visual acuity is such that the athlete cannot recognize the letter E 15 centimetres by 15 centimetres from a distance of 25. And his guide is Natalia Karpizova. And she is doing a great job of keeping Kubaka on the track. He's only 0.6 of a second slower than Gorsi Ibez. And uh, his goggles are totally blacked out. So he has absolutely no light coming in. It's uh, phenomenal to watch and the trust and work between guide and athlete, incredible. Had a difficulty in the slalom, it was very steep and very icy and uh, just never had a chance to get the rhythm going. But he's doing a brilliant job, as is uh, Kapisova in uh, this second run of the giant slalom, Kubaka of Slovakia. 242.18. I'm not sure he's going to be inside of that, but it's going to be close. He might be, you know, he might be. No, he's just outside. 0.34 goes second. 242.18. Brilliant stuff from Malik Kubaka and Natalia Kapisova. Now, Maciej Kresel and Anna Orgazinska of Poland in the B3 class, and this describes the least. Severe visual impairment eligible for alpine skiing. Eligible athletes either have a restricted visual field of less than 40 degrees diameter or a low, low visual acuity. And uh, we'll see the full run here because uh, Kubaka given a clear piece and uh, Kresel held until he had finished. Now the skier can go any time from five there to minus five. So he can go from here until five seconds after zero he decides um, to go on two and that's absolutely fine now Anna Ogazinska and uh, Maciej Kresel 10th after the first run let's see how they fare on this second run over the bear's brow into this uh, short steep section before it uh, pans out into this uh, flat and narrow section lining up for the lake jump Kresel who's third in the slalom run of the super combined and not a bad job but he's late in the line very late in the line and Kresel does a good job of making that blue gate he's still got the green light his advantage at the top was 1.42 it's now just under two tenths, and uh, we will need to ski this bottom half cleanly in order to maintain the green light. And Gossi Ipez uh, in Spain might see off another skier here. 2.42.18, the time of Gossi Ipez, and now Borga Zinska puts uh, the pedal to the metal and uh, has to wait up, stay the two gates, but Gossi Ipez does see off another and Kresel goes third, 0.46 slower than Gossi Ipez. 
Radomir Dudas of Slovakia and Michael Sedevan the next to go. And we pick him up on the late jump and he's twisted and on one ski makes the blue gate. Well, the advantage at the top, uh, 1.73, all of that has gone and 1600s more. Now Sedevan starts to talk his skier through the final few turns. Gosipe's time of 2.42.18 could stand up again. And here we come then into the finish. Dudas will be outside. He will go into fourth place for the time being. 1.24 off the pace. Now Miroslav Halos of Slovakia and Mar Maros Hudik his guide and their advantage at the top 2.05 but Carlos is out he has uh, fallen on uh, the uh, lake jump pitch and he will not finish let's have another look he recovered from that turn oh, and then he got blown too far on the line and into the soft stuff. No way back for him there. So, Halos, he took a silver in the downhill and he's actually second in the World Cup standings uh, in this discipline. He's a non finisher at the Winter Paralympic Games. So, next up, it's. Uh, it should be even Francev of Russia. And the Russian coach looks on. Here is Ivan Francev and Herman Agranovsky, his guide, being in the B2 class. His advantage at the top, well, it's 3.53 seconds. So we're going to see more of Francev run. His, whoa, his sister Alexandra Franceva has uh, taken four medals from four races in these Winter Paralympics. My brother yet to find the podium and that mistake I think it has cost him any chance of a podium in his home Winter Paralympics. Now over the range change of the late jump. And Franceva a good job. Oh, a late in the line, but a good turn on the left ski to get back for that blue gate. Now, how's the time? 2.07. So he's lost, what, nearly one and a half seconds of his advantage. And now, if uh, Agalanovsky can get him down this final section of gates, uh, Francis will lead. But whether it's enough for a medal, uh, I don't think so. Too far. Off the pace, he's got five and a half seconds off the time of Marku, so he takes some pretty big mistakes from uh, skiers one to six. If uh, Francis was going to make the podium, but he will lead to 4078. He's 1.4 inside the time of Gotte Ipes, and he leads for the time being. And Kresel is out of the winner's enclosure. Now, Alessandro Daldos and his guide, Luca uh, Negrini. These two lead the World Cup standings for Giant Slalom, having won the first race in Threadboat. Oh, no! Skis off and Daldos is down. Well, they were going nice and quickly, but he... Well, he gets the ski release here, doesn't he? It's the left ski just comes off. That's an equipment failure. And uh, Negrini gets to the side. Now, this is Chris Williamson of Canada. Or well, that was. This is his start. We'll catch him up again in a second. Williamson and Nick Brush, fifth quickest after the first run. And Williamson's advantage 3.75. Now, here he is. And 
and uh, just being told it will slow it down as they come over the late jump. And Williamson out of shape, out of control, but gets it back together and pushes the cry from Nick Brush. 1.85, it was 3.75 at the top. And Nick Brush encourages Williamson. Here we go, he says. The bronze medalist in the super combined. Can he find another medal here? He was fifth quickest after the first run. He needs to find a lot of time on the two skiers directly above him to make bronze, but he will lead by 3.21 seconds. So he yet found time on the bottom part of the track. Good skiing from Williamson. A new time to beat 237. 57. So Williamson from France having got the Ipes. Now Valerie Kuzabov of Russia and uh, his guy Evgeny Gedeweb in the B2 class. And the double gold medalist from these Winter Paralympics in slalom and super combined. He's won two giant slaloms on the tour this year in Panorama, Canada and Copper Mountain in the United States. Uh, back in January, he's third in the standings with those two wins. Those are the only two races, I know, excuse me. He was third in San Ritz coming into these games. Now, onto the steep section, gets into the back seat and manages to get the skis round. Well, good skiing from Roy Kuzabov and he leads by 2.69. He's almost double his advantage from the top. So if Roy Kuzabov can ski the bottom like Williamson did, then there's a chance so you'll put enough pressure on Jan Santacana Mazdaguri in bronze medal position. Who's up next? Kuzabov, fourth after the first run. Now just six gates or so from home. 2.37.57, the time to beat. That's set by Chris Williamson. Oh, he's smashed it, four seconds. Brilliant skiing. 1.38 is advantage at the top. Four seconds is advantage at the bottom. Valery Red Kuzabov has uh, put some pressure on Jan Santacana Mazdaguri. Here is Jan Santacana Mazdaguri and Miguel Galindo Gathev of Spain in the B2 class. Their advantage at the top just three tenths of a second over Red Kuzabov of Russia. Now. Santagana Matagui has a uh, couple of medals already from these uh, Winter Paralympic Games. Gold and silver. And he's flying down here. He's out of shape. Good recovery. That is a great recovery. But how much time has that killed? 204.62. Well, he's a 0.83 behind now. He's going to have to motor. Otherwise, Ray Kuzabov has another medal and Santa Karnamatagui will have to wait and see what happens with the final two skiers, the fastest two from the first run. Santa Karnamatagui and Galindo Garthez have got to really fly through these lower gates. Ray Kuzabov of Russia leads the way, 2.33.57. I don't think it's going to be for Santa Karnamatagui. The time comes, the time goes, and he goes second. 1.25 off the pace. Well, he's going to need an error from Jakob Krakow or Martin Motika to take a third medal here. Kuzabov knows he's got another medal. He doesn't know what colour, though. Jakob Krakow and uh, Martin Motika of Slovakia now. Their advantage over the Russian. We had Kuzabov at the top. One and a half seconds. Kerker, the defending Paralympic giant slalom champion. Can he find his way onto the podium once again here in Sochi? Good work on this lake jump section. Oh, close to that red gate. Now, where are we on the time check? Oh, it's good. It's very good. He's found another, what, well, 0.63 of a second on those opening turns. Krakow now trying to apply some pressure to Mac Marku, who's 
miles in front, 2.39 seconds in front of Krakow. But if he gets to the bottom, the pressure is on. Marku will have to ski quickly and have to finish in order to take a first uh, Paralympic, Winter Paralympic gold. Here we go then, 233.57, where Kuzubov is not going to be winning a third gold because Krakow leads by 1.91, 231.66. The time of Jakob Krakow and him and Martin Martik share an embrace in the finish area. They have another medal. And Chris Williamson departs the winner's enclosure. So Mac, Marku and Robin Femi, the quickest pair after the first run. And they were miles in front, 2.39 in front over the terrain change of the Bears Brown. Robin Femi is chatting away. There's a big rut there on that red gate. We'll have to see how that uh, manifests itself over the rest of the racing. And not holding back here down the late jump. Oh, Marku with a massive wobble, but retains it. Well, he's lost a little bit of his advantage, but he's still 1.64 the right side of the clock. Now, Robin Femi, can he see his man down these final few turns? Bronze, twice already here in his first Winter Paralympic Games. Can he find a gold medal in the final event for the men? The time to beat, 2.31.66. They tuck for the line. It must be gold for Canada and Marku. It is by 2.26 seconds. Mac Marku wins gold in Sochi. Jacob Krakow takes silver, two seconds off the pace, and Valery Kuzabov adds a bronze medal to his two goals that he has already won. So with the fastest 15 down, we have two more to ski. The uh, slowest two from the first run, Dmitry Kuzmin of Ukraine in the B2 class. The Next to Ski, he was uh, some 20 seconds slower than uh, Marku on the first run, so there's uh, no way he's going to be upsetting the uh, podium. And his guide is Sergei Dodosh. And Krizmin. He uh, skied the slalom as well in his first uh, Winter Paralympic Games. Good work. From the pair. Now, this is going to be a very tough ask down this set. Uh, Lake jump pitch. It's uh, Dolos the guy doing a good job. And Kuzmin is at uh, 36 seconds. They lost four seconds on the top turn, so good work from Kuzmin. Now the final pitch coming up to the finishing set of gates. Six from home. And Kuzmin will get a result. 13th in the World Power World Championships in La Molina. He finishes in 13th place here as well. Dimitro Kuzmin is followed by Damir Mizdrak of uh, Croatia. The 22 year old starting, uh, well, he was four seconds adrift of uh, Kuzmin at the top. He's uh, some way off the pace now, he's 15 seconds off at that point. So Mizdrak will. Uh, Come home in 14th place if he 
makes it to the bottom of the piece. And uh, his guy, Luca Debeliak, doing a uh, good job. And over the line they come, 3.42.2, 1 minute 12 seconds off the pace of our winner, Mac Marker, Canada, but they're down and they're taking the applause of the crowd. So that concludes the men's giant slalom second run and these are the standings, Mac Marku of Canada and Robin Femi. Are the quickest 229.62. Jakob Kracker and Martin Motika are second, two seconds off the pace. Ballet Red Kuzabov does enough to get above Jon Santacana Mastagui into third place and 14 of the 18 skiers complete the course. Well, Canada celebrating a second gold in the Alpine disciplines at these games. A beautiful afternoon for the men's giant slalom here in Rosakuta. Day eight of competition and the second run in the men's standing competition about to get underway. Here is the start list and uh, skiers to watch out for. Well, the uh, defending uh, Paralympic champion is uh, not taking part, so there will be a new one. But Vincent uh, Gauthier Manuel, the reigning para world champion, leads the way. And Alexei Bugayev get amongst the medals once more the fastest 15 in reverse order from the first run and uh, then it's competitors 16 through to 35 after the medals have been decided the Spanish technicians at the top enjoying themselves and uh, the Japan team <laughs> as well looking to challenge on this second run. Vincent <laughs> Gauthier Manuel of France was a uh, bronze medalist in Vancouver, but that is uh, Gakuta Koike who will get us underway very shortly. Here we go then, the second run, the medal run of the men's giant slalom in the standing competition is underway and it's Gakuta Koiki of Japan, the first skier out of the gate, 15th quickest from the first run. Let's have a look at this second GS run, the pattern of gate set by Jordi Carbonel Palou of Spain and uh, less turning gates than run one as he comes over at Bear's Brow, then onto this flatter section between the Bears brow jump and the late jump. The late jump is the uh, hardest part of this track, although there is a big rut forming on that red gate. Let's have a look at this pitch. Some big holes as well. Got to stay high in the line to keep out of the bumps. And Joyke is hanging in there. Well, emergency turns. It kills the speed as it flattens out. And that will harm in 208. .08 is the first split time. There are seven classes in this standing classification and Gakuta Koike skiing the LW682 class, which is for skiers that have an impairment in one arm and skiers will compete with one ski pole only. Giant Slalom, the most difficult of all the Alpine disciplines and Koike sets the time at 2.38.07. Yeah, nearly every skier will start skiing Giant slalom, so this is the discipline they race the most. 
And as I say, the hardest discipline to master. Very rarely, if ever, do you ski a perfect giant slalom race. Now, this is Kirk Schoenstein of Canada, 14th quickest after the uh, first run. And his advantage over uh, our leader Goiki at the top, it's uh, 0.22 of a second. And it's uh, on the wrong way for the young Canadian, 20 years of age. Inside of the finish, 2.38.07 is the time to beat. He was two seconds down at the first time check, and he is 2.9 seconds down at the bottom. Goes into second place. Next out of the start hut is Masahiko Tokai of Japan. It should have been James Stanton of the United States, but he's a non-starter. So Tokai, who has an advantage of 0.88 over his compatriot Goiki at the top, finds himself up still but by half that much, 0.42. Silver medalist from the Winter Games, Paralympic Winter Games in Torino in 2006. Being in the LW3 class, and this sport class is for athletes who have a moderate impairment in both legs. They will ski with uh, two skis and uh, prosthetics. Some LW3 skiers have mild coordination problems as Tokai goes second, 500 behind his compatriot Goiki. And Goiki had big, big errors on the late jump pitch as well, didn't he? Japan continued to come. Toshihiro Ebe in his, uh, well, his fifth Games, fifth Paralympic Games, 92 in Alberville, and everyone since then. And uh, his advantage at the top was 1.19, and his advantage now is 1.5. So, good skiing from the 42-year-old. Well, the bottom part of this piece slightly different to the one ski for downhill and super G and the second run of super combined. Veers off to the left and avoids the deer jump as we have a new lead up by almost one and three quarter seconds. Toshihiro over in Japan are one, two, three at the moment. Sadly, they can't stop the clock, but the 42-year-old uh, leads the way. Roma Ribu, LW92 class, and skiers in this sport class have an impairment that affects arms and legs. Some skiers in this class have coordination problems such as spasticity. Now, Ribu, silver in the giant slalom at Salt Lake, had an advantage at the top of half a second. He's now 0.62 the wrong side of the clock. Now, the downhill, they went straight on. Now they veer off to the left hand side and come through this part of the wood that was here for the men's giant slalom in the Olympics and uh, I'm glad to see that the uh, organisers of the Winter Paralympic Games have decided to follow the same route. It makes for much better giant slalom. The deer jump finish is very, very steep and would be incredibly difficult to ski. Uh, Rebu goes second. Lost a lot of time from top to bottom. Nearly one point... Uh, Eight seconds. Number 35 is uh, Martin Wurz of Austria in his first uh, Winter Paralympic Games. A 21-year-old in all sorts of trouble on the late jump pitch and uh, gets it back together and will find himself down by 0.21, having had uh, 0.61 at the top. Oh, is that his goggles that have come off? No, well, I'm not sure. What's uh, been detached from something? Something's been detached from somewhere. We don't know what. As Wurtz continues on his way, and 2:36:33, the time to beat. Will he get inside? Uh, no, just outside by 0.38. Goes second, and Tosha here anyway, sees off another one from 11. He's into the top 10. Now, Alexandra Vetchov has uh, 2.33 seconds 
on our leader at the top. Vetrov skiing in the LW573 class. It's close to that blue gate. He's running late in the line. Oh, just makes it inside the blue gate, but misses the red. And Vetrov puts his head in his hands. He can't believe he's messed that up. Well, oh, huge disappointment for the youngster. But if you start getting late in the line, it compounds itself with every gate that passes. And it's almost impossible to uh, pull back. It. And it is the case here. Now, Michael Brugger of Switzerland, the uh, next to go skiing uh, in the LW4 class, which is similar to skiers in the sport class LW2. So LW4 skiers have an impairment in one leg only, but with less activity limitation. A typical example is a below the knee application. One leg and Brugger is down as well on the late jump pitch. And uh, have another look. Got a little sideways. Well, uh, got caught on the inside ski. Got just too hot on the blue gate. And uh, loses the ski as he goes into the uh, soft stuff at the side. So, a non finish for Brugger. And Switzerland's uh, disappointing Winter Paralympic Games continues. <laughs> Kotaro Yamazaki in a relaxed mood at the top of the run. The technician putting the final touches to the ski. Oh, Slovakian coach with <laughs> A very patriotic haircut. Martin France there, number 30, just doing his warm up, and uh, Bruger just getting his ski given back to him. And once he is out of the racing line, then uh, we can restart proceedings. So 30 seconds before Martin France of Slovakia gets his second run underway. His best uh, Winter Paralympic chance on finish was fourth in uh, Torino in 2006. France skiing. Uh, in the LW91 class, which is for skiers that have an impairment that affects arms and legs. Some skiers set in this class have coordination problems such as spasticity or some loss of control over one side of their body and depending on their abilities, uh, will ski with one or two skis and one or two poles. Now, Marta France, who uh, did a good job in the super combined on day seven of competition in Sochi. What can you do on giant slalom day? Very icy on this leg jump pitch and a good job from France, 206.58. His advantage at the top was 2.8 and at the next check, he's taken a full second out of our current leader. Toshihiro Ebert and France. Sixth after the first run. He's not going to finish any worse than that if he makes it to the bottom. Another fine performance from the 29 year old Slovakian. France inside of the finish. 236 33. Must be beaten. Oh, it's going to be comfortably beaten by 4.67. We have a new best time of 2.31.66 and he'll enjoy that. Thomas Phil of Switzerland now. 
A bronze medalist from Giant Slalom in 06. Silver from the Worlds in 2011. You can hear him chatting to himself all the way down. He had an advantage of 0.43 at the top. He still got the green light, but by only 15 hundredths of a second. And uh, I've got a feeling there are a few line errors on the top there, which might cost him speed on this bottom part. But Phil skiing in the LW92 class, similar to Martin France. Our leader at 231.66. And Phil, did those line errors cost him? Yeah, yes, they did. 0.16, the wrong side of the clock. So, Martin France, with four to come, can finish no worse than fifth. And, uh, Tosha Hiro over now down in third place. So, Australia and Mitchell Gourlay, the next to go. Now, this is where it gets really exciting. Gourlay has uh, a disadvantage over Bugayev in bronze medal of just one one hundredth of a second. So, he needs to ski this quickly. He needs to ski it direct. And there was a little error over the Bears' brow. But he's got it back together again on this flatter section. This is where it's going to have to count. Gourlay and Bugayev in the same class. The LW682 and Gourlay a little late onto the red gate. Jumps into the blue. Oh, he's in all sorts of trouble. That will have shaved off speed. He'll still have the green light by two seconds. But at the top, it was 2.58. So he's lost half a second there. And I think that error on the bottom of the late jump has just cost it a medal unless Bugayev at uh, Salke or Gautier Manuel ski out. And again, getting late in the line. Oh, he's gone through that gate. And he takes it in the face. Well, late in the line. And sadly, for Mitchell Gourlay, he is down and out. Let's hope he's OK. Well, he's up. That's the main thing. He was getting late in the line. He was very late there. And then struggling to get back. And, oh, dearie me, that is going to hurt. Let's hope he took that across the chest and rather across the neck. Just missed out in the super combined, was fourth. And he's going to miss out here. So Martin France still leads the way with three to come Bugayev, Salka and Gauthier Manuel can France hang on and pick up a medal a first Winter Paralympic medal or will he equal his best finish in giant slalom of fourth from the Turing Games the uh, later runners in this uh, standing category just uh, warming up, but uh, we've got the fastest three to come. And Alexey uh, Bugayev has an advantage of 2.59 over Martin France at the top. Real disappointment <coughs> for the Australian camp and Mitchell Gourlay. It. We wait. There is Alexei uh, Bugayev's fan club family. And uh, the wrong way round. Thomas Phil should be on the other side if he's in second place, but there you go. Right, here we go then. Alexei Bugayev, the third quickest after the first run, skiing in the LW682 class. 116.15 is first run time. His advantage over Martin France of Slovakia, our leader at the top, 2.59. This second run, some uh, five, six seconds quicker than the first. So Burgayev, who is a very quick skier anyway, will should fly down this track. It's just a matter of whether or not he pushes too much, especially on this late jump pitch. For 16 years of age, he is the pin-up poster boy of these Russian Winter Paralympics in alpine skiing, at least, because 
He has won a medal in every category and he's in danger here, but he recovers beautifully. Wonderful scheme from Bugayev and he's extended his lead to 3.3 from 2.59. Bugayev looking to put the pressure on Marcus Salka and Vincent Gauthier Manuel. We're still to start. He's going to lead here. Perfect in the line. Oh, well, no, 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 he's a little late. Oh, dear. Well, now, how much time has that shaved off? Not enough. He still will lead by 3.79, but it would have been a lot more had he not had that error on the relatively flat section of the finish. And it's a bronze for him, at least. Martin France down into silver. Tosha here, Avery now down into fourth. And Bugayev, well, he'll be happy with the bronze when the dust settles, but he knows that he could have put some real pressure on this man, Marcus Salka of Austria. Salka, who did the speed double in the downhill and Super G on his way, skiing in the, the LW91 class. His advantage over Bugayev at the top, just two tenths of a second. Now, how can Salka deal with this uh, late jump pitch? Got to set high in the line. I'm not sure that blue gate is high enough. We'll see how it translates down the pitch. He's getting bounced around all over the place, but he's doing a good job. Yeah, good job from Salka. And, uh, well, he's lost just three one-hundredths of a second off his advantage and remember Bugayev had a big mistake about four gates from home when he was absolutely motoring Salka into this final pattern of gates the last two skiers have got this gate wrong Salka does nothing of the sort and 227.87 will be beaten I'm sure or will it no it's not Salka a quarter of a second the wrong side of the clock and Bugayev will win another silver well Salka I'm not sure where he lost time in the bottom now Van San Gaultier Manuel he was by far and away the uh, best skier in the first one 1.43 seconds faster than Bugayev Gaultier Manuel skiing the LW682 class which is the same as Bugayev oh there's the big hole and uh, well oh dearie me big mistake gets on the inside ski Gautier Manuel on the edge now how much of this time has he lost 159.48 1.7 well he's gained just under three tenths but you never know if the errors on that steep section are going to cost him here and he's late in the line onto that blue gate but gets it back these innocuous looking turns at the bottom have caused some problems for Mitchell Gula and Alexei Bugayev will they cause problems for Gautier Manuel now 227.87 he's lost his pole it doesn't matter he leads he wins by two seconds Vincent Gautier Manuel wins the giant slalom despite hitting the gate and losing his pole. So Martin Falk of Austria, the 16th fastest after the first run. He was eight seconds off the pace of uh, Vincent Gautier Manuel. And he's lost more time but this is all about now trying to get inside the top 10 if he can that's uh, a kind of 238.12 that's a difference of five seconds from Gautier Manuel so it might be a little much exit for the rest of these skiers so it's top 15 up for grabs here in the Winter Paralympics and Kurt Schoenstein 240.97 currently in 11th place and Falk gets inside him by uh, 0.77 of a second. 
Robin Kusch of Switzerland, just 15 Five, years four, of age, 17th quickest after run one. He is the nephew of the famous Didier Kusch, arguably one of the best, if not the best, uh, downhill skier that Switzerland have uh, ever produced. And his nephew, he's in the LW92 class for uh, skiers that have impairment that affects arms and legs. Some skiers in this class have coordination problems such as spasticity or some loss of control over one side of their body. Now, can he finish inside the uh, top 12? 2.40.97 is the time he needs to beat. He has beaten it 12. This is Ralph Green of the United States of America. The first African-American to re represent the United States uh, Paralympic, the Paralpine ski team. Now, his uh, advantage or disadvantage over Koos because we're now going in ascending order. So each skier from now on only is slower than the previous one. And uh, he was nine tenths lower than Koosh at the top of the hill. And Green looking to be the time of 2.40.97, which is out of uh, Kurt Schoenstein in 13th place. He hasn't done that, so Green will go into 14th place in a time of a combined time of 2 minutes 44.87 seconds. Christoph Broda of Switzerland, the next to go. 10th at the uh, Power World Championships in 2013. It's not going to be as high as that today. 15.93 off the pace. And uh, Green at that stage is 15.09. So fairly close but uh, is uh, four tenths back at the top of the mountain so it's actually gained a little time on green and you find a bit more time on these bottom turns to uh, finish 14th and push green back into 15 green's time is 2.44.87 no he goes 15 and uh, finishes 1.27 behind Ralph Green, but well done for Christoph Prodar. Now, James Whitley of Great Britain in the LW573 class. Just three one hundredths of a second slower than uh, Christoph Prodar of Switzerland, the skier before him. He is at 14.16 off the pace there, and that's. Uh, Almost two seconds inside the time of Broda at that point in the second run. So a good run here from James Whitley of Great Britain. Top 15 spot beckons. 2.46.14 the time of Broda. 2.44.87 the time of Green. And Whitley could get inside Green. He does. Goes 2.42.78 into 14th place after the second run. 20th quickest on run one, 13th quickest on run two. Now, Christian Lantala of uh, Italy in the LW2 class, the first uh, LW2 class here we've seen in this second run and that uh, skiers in this class have a significant impairment in one leg some skiers for example have an impaired leg from birth and uh, they ski with one ski only in the second uh, in the in a run with the two uh, outriggers on the end of their pole now lantala now uh, he compared to broda who is currently in 16th place is Six tenths down, or six tenths slower on the first run. But can he get inside 2.46.14? It's going to be close, but he should be able to. He is inside it. He is 15 in front of Ralph Green as well. 
So good skiing from Lantala. Nice, nice. Four, three, two, nine, 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 nine. 21st to uh, 15th overall at the moment. Marco Zanotti, who was 11.49 down at the top, has lost another four seconds, just under. Now his time compared to others that have gone before, well he's uh, 1.6 seconds slower than Ralph Green. So can he make up that time on this bottom section? Green's time 2.44.87, no. And Zanotti does get in front of Christoph Brodart by uh, 0.65 of a second. Jorge Miguelez of Chile, 26 years of age, skiing in the LW4 class now. Miguelez, first one time, 126.41. And that is near enough, but it's exactly two seconds slower than Rodar. Uh, so, can Miguelez find that time into this? Closing pattern of gates. Just sliding one or two of his turns, which will shave time off, shave time off because it's killing the speed. And now he gets the car back and gets a nice line on that blue-red combination. Now Brodar's time 2:46.14. He's outside it. Miguelez stops the clock 2:48.8. Goes into 19th spot. Roethlisberger, 0.26 slower than Miguelez on the first run. Can he find that time on run two? And the steep section of the late jump. Roethlisberger, 19.3 down at that point. So, uh, second slower than Miguelez in front of him. First Winter Paralympic Games at the age of 24. It's been the LW571 class. Stops the clock in a time of 2.48.63. And he does just get above Miguelev by uh, two tenths of a second, 17 hundredths in fact. Mads Andreasen now. Oh, but Norway and he started Paris skiing competition three years ago and at the first time he's 18.79 down so quicker than Roethlisberger at that point and Roethlisberger through the bottom part and very nicely indeed to find up a lot of time if uh, Andreasen can find that sort of line and pace and he could make up one or two spots. So Roethlisberger 248.63, Miguelez 248.8, and Dresden 248.92. Goes in the 21st place, just uh, 1,200 slower than Jorge Miguelez. And Jörg Lachner of Italy in the LW92 class. Fifteenth and eighteenth is two giant slalom results. Whoa! Going very quickly now. He's missed the gate. Missed that red gate. And Lachner comes out of the giant slalom. Now what happened here? Oh, he just got bounced there. Oh dearie me! Oh, he's off the racing line. Makes that blue gate. No, well he missed the red gate prior to that but uh, as we said previously if you start getting late in the line it compounds itself with every gate that passes unless you somehow 
managed to get it back on. And the only way you can usually do that is by taking a lot of speed off. Jasper Balkan of Belgium now, LW91 class. This he's using as experience. His aim is to try and medal in Pyeongchang in 2018. He's uh, 21 years of age, so there's plenty of time to get the experience under his belt. And but getting bounced around on this very tricky late jump pitch. 21.94, 219, 72. Andreasen currently in 21st place. Falcon. He's uh, 1.3 seconds slower at uh, the top than Andreasen. So we have to see this bottom part very nicely indeed if he's going to overtake the Norwegian who has a time of 2.48.92. Well, Valken hasn't beaten that, but he will stop the clock and finish in his first Winter Paralympics in a time of 2.52.87. That's at 22nd place for the young Belgian skier. Andre Szczesny of Poland, the next to go in the LW2 class. He was uh, four tenths of a second slower than Jasper Balkan. Can he find up some time on this second run? He's at second Winter Paralympic Games. 19th in uh, the 25th sorry in Vancouver 19th at the Worlds in La Molina last year and uh, Chesney uh, looking to beat 252.87 which was game minimum place he's done it he goes into 22nd and he pushes Jasper Balkan down seven remain the first of whom is uh, Fukutaro Yamazaki of Japan, skiing in the LW92 class. It's over two seconds slower than Chesney. 2.3 seconds slower than Balkan on the first run. So, a big ask to get inside the top 23 for Yamazaki he will be around as he continues uh, alpine skiing at the next games and uh, the time then of Balkan 2.52.87 no he goes 24 but uh, delighted to get to the bottom of a very difficult giant slalom set of gates now Joel Hunt of the United States who had uh, two bashes at uh, the first run he got uh, stopped just before the late jump first time round because of a fall to his uh, one of his teammates this time round he's going to get the run away first time uh, he was uh, half a second slower than Yamazaki at the top, Joel Hunt. How can he do on the second half of this run? Yamazaki's time, 2.59.03. Joel Hunt, if we get inside that, he does. 2.58.33, goes 24th place. Tyler Carter now of the United States in the LW4 class. And he was only two seconds slower than uh, Yamazaki. And he's 28.72 down there. So a second outside the pace of Yamazaki and he's uh, encouraging himself all the way down. Carter who is only skiing the giant slalom here and Sochi looking to get inside the time of 2.59.03 that is the uh, Fukutaro Yamazaki 
And it's going to come and go, is it? Yeah, it is. Three minutes, 0.14, goes into 26th place. But, uh, he's got to the bottom of his uh, first Winter Paralympic run. Carlos Javier Codino Tomates of Argentina. He was uh, 0.34 slower than uh, Tyler Carter on the first run. 27.41 down there. Carter was 28.72, so he's a second inside the time of Carter. Taking to uh, account the three tenths, so he's about 0.7 up. And Regina Tomatis looking to take away 26th place from Tyler Carter, which he should do comfortably. In fact, he's taken them a couple of places. Goes 25th above Yamazaki and Carter. Good second run from Kadina Tomatis. Mehmet Cekic of Turkey in the LW4 class in the standing category his first major championship ski with uh, Solomon Giants Lance so this is second event the flag bearer for his country at the opening ceremony 36.34 that's uh, the biggest time gap we've seen at the intermediate time check 44 years of age check it Two more to come after him. And check it. Will uh, slot into 28th place. And we'll get a top 30 finish. Hey, 309.73. He uh, enjoyed that. And congratulations to him. Now, Yukoslav Milosevic in the LW6. 8-1 class he was uh, 2.6 seconds slower than Mehmet Cekic at, uh, on the first run it was time for him to beat 309.73 he's not going to do that he's 45.43 not the pace of Gautier Manuel but uh, Cekic only 36 seconds off the pace so lot of it Looking to ski into 29th or 30th place. In fact, it will be 29th because Sena Turkovic, the last to go, was at some 18 seconds slower than Milosevic on the first run. So Milosevic will finish in 29th place. Congratulations to him. The top 30 is finished. The time is 3.22.36. And that was uh, 10 seconds slower than Cekic. Here we go then, Sanad Turkovic of Bosnia, Herzegovina, the final man to ski the second run of the men's giant slalom standing category. 45 years of age, another skier who's, winning, who's racing in his first Winter Paralympic Games. He's over a minute off the pace of our winner. He is uh, Vincent Gucci Manuel in sight. I don't know if he finished now. Oh, he's missed the blue gate, is he? Yeah, he has. He's got his line horribly wrong and he's out inside of the finish. A disappointment for Serkovic. He uh, doesn't finish. But he will get uh, a round of applause and a big cheer when he makes it into the finish area, I'm sure. There it is. Let's have a look here. Well, I must have thought he couldn't make it across to that blue control gate on the left of the piece. So there you have it 49 started 29 finished the men's giant slalom standing category has come to an end and here are the standings after that uh, second run 
Vincent Gauthier Manuel of France wins by two seconds from Alexei Bugayev of Russia. A fifth medal for the Russian at these games. Marcus Salka takes the bronze. Martin France and misses out. He is in for Thomasville. Well, that's probably Switzerland's best finish of these games. And just looking through there, some good results for the likes of Robin Kush, Kirk Schornstein and James Whitley. The young brigade finishing 12th, 13th and 14th. So we are just getting ready now for the start of the men's giant slalom second run in the sitting category. And uh, as we look in the beautiful vista of the mountains, the course is being worked and the men's giant slalom sitting second run will be underway very shortly. 31 competitors going, the fastest 15 in reverse order. And Corey Peters of New Zealand leads the way after run one. Let's have a look at the start list. No defending Winter Paralympic champion here because Martin Braxenthaler of Germany has since retired. But the reigning para world champion, uh, Taiki Mori, number eight there, 3.16 seconds off the pace but at the top three of well, top four only second separated by just over three quarters of a second top three sorry by three quarters of a second it's going to be very interesting between Ravel, Kuntz and Peters but Georg Kreiter not out of it yet Christoph Kuntz a silver medalist in Vancouver four years ago and a bronze medalist from the Power World Championships and he find a gold medal. If he wins gold, it will be Switzerland's 50th gold medal in Winter Paralympic history. So there you have the 31. Johan Tork Holmgrensen of Norway will uh, wrap up proceedings on day eight of competition here at the Rosakuta Alpine Centre. So here we go then. We're just about ready for the sixth run of the day. Plenty of fun being had in the stands. And they will cheer every racer down. They have been brilliant and created a fantastic atmosphere. So the fastest 15 in reverse order, and then 16 through to 31 will go after that. A pair of socks being knitted. Everyone enjoying themselves. It's a nice day up here at the Rosacuta Alpine Centre, and that is the scene at the top of the run. Number. Ready to go. <laughs> 85, that was Cyril Moore. 83, Johan Tabalay. Uh, France, both them are That's it. They're all enjoying themselves. <laughs> Oscar Antonio Espiargas Juarez of Spain. He's going to get us underway very shortly. <laughs> El besito. Uh, Carla, para Carla. Almost got him, Heath. The main side at the top. Thanks. Hello, hello. Uh, Yasmin Bamba. And 
the course just having some repair being done to it before we get this uh, second run in the men's sitting category underway you can see them just putting the blue die down on the uh, track to give the skiers an idea of the corridor they need to be uh, racing And Corey Peters maintain his advantage from an excellent first run and win New Zealand's first medals, or first medal at uh, these uh, Winter Paralympic Games. It would be their se second ever Alpine after Adam Hall picked up gold in the uh, standing slalom category in Vancouver. Well, will Christoph Kuntz win Switzerland's 50th gold medal in total at Winter Paralympic Games. That's not a course. Count out Roman Rabel or Georg Kaiter who could also step onto the top part of the podium. That's why there's the hold in uh, proceedings. Just sorting out that blue gate midway down the late jump pitch. The crowd amusing themselves. France already have a gold medal in the pocket from today. And Gautier Manuel in the standing category. That's going Antonio Espiarga Suarez's fan club. Waiting to cheer him down. Here we go then, the second run of the men's giant slalom sitting category gets underway and it is Oscar Antonio Espargas Juarez who will start. He's the first man down on the second run, the fastest 15 from the first run going in reverse order on a pattern of gates set by the Spanish coach Jordi Carbonell Palu. It's not as tight as the first pattern of gates and uh, giant slalom, the toughest of all the alpine disciplines, combines speed with technical ability. And there's absolutely nowhere for the athletes to take a breather down a course that snakes from left to right, alternate blue and red gates. And this the toughest part of the track over the late jump pitch. And there are three classes in this uh, category LW10 11 and 12 and uh, Espiarga Suarez skiing in LW12-1 which is the sport class that includes skiers with normal only slightly decreased fu trunk function and leg impairments skiers with leg impairments in sport classes LW1 to 4 which is in the standing category often also fit this sport class so can sit or stand at the start of their careers and the tie for everyone to beat 244-01 well, Espelago Suarez and Mick Brennan both had very good first runs to get inside the top 15 Brennan the lowest drawn skier in the seeds for the second run and his advantage at the top was uh, 0.28 but he's seven hundredths down at the uh, intermediate checkpoint now Brennan beautifully well on run one can he find the rhythm and the line on the bottom of run two best conditions that he has skied in all week he's at the back of the field 244.01 for Brennan in the LW 
12-2, but he's 0.87 the wrong side of the clock. And finishes with a time of 2.44.88. Cyril Moore of France, LW12-1 class. And Moore, fourth in Vancouver. A silver medalist in the Super Combined and Super G from the world in Power Worlds in 2011. Well, he was 184. At the top, he's 3.37 there. And skiing very, very well indeed. He's taken a lot of time out of the top two. Cyril Moore then will lead and he will set a new best time. And that time is 240.86 inside by 3.15 seconds. Good run from Cyril Moore. Christopher Devlin Young, 1.15, the right side of the clock at the start, and he's very late in the line. And well, he's 1.75 up at the check, but the check coming at a good time in terms of getting the green light, but the errors in the line before the time check, I'm sure, will cost him further down the track. We'll wait and see. So, the oldest man in the Alpine field. And any discipline. Whoa! Well, he's late in the line again, and that, this time it costs him as he comfortably misses that blue gate. The line was horribly wrong. Takeshi Suzuki now of Japan. 11th after the first run. A bronze medalist in Vancouver. A silver medalist at the Power Worlds in this discipline. And also, a giant slalom world champion in 2000 and nine and uh, well 127 at the top is down to 101 in the middle didn't have the best of first run and he left him far, himself far too much to do bashes the gate out of the way now the time to beat 24086 that of Cyril Moore Suzuki leads 2.39.01. It's 1.85 quicker than Moore, and he found time on the bottom part of the track. Thomas Nolte of Germany, quarter of a second quicker than Suzuki on the first run. Finds himself up by over a second now on Suzuki at the intermediate now. You can see how bumpy this uh, track is getting in part. And uh, Nolte doing well to try and maintain as much ski snow contact as possible. Second after the slow leg of the Super Combine, he couldn't convert that good start into a medal. But here, he is going to lead by almost two seconds. And we have a new best time of 2.37.11. Jean-Yves Lemur of France, the next to go. Better slalom skier than he is a giant slalom skier, but he does like the technical discipline. And his advantage over, I can't need Nolte at 0.21 at the top, so. He's lost almost a second from the start hut to the interval time. And that's a heavy edge check, which will uh, put any hopes of getting time back out the window. And John Evelemur, six gates from home, 2.37.11. I don't think will be beaten. I'd be very surprised, but he's going to be quite close, isn't he? 
off uh, the pace and he goes into second place. It was a lot closer than I'd anticipated. Now, Dagi Mori, the para world champion in giant slalom. Silver medalist. And, whoa! That is some recovery. It's going to say silver medalist in Super G. And he almost came to grief on the run here, but he's still 0.87 in a second up, having started 0.6 up at the top. So, skiing very quick, very direct. How will it fare at the bottom? Look how much of a rounder line he's taking through some of these gates to uh, previous skiers. Important not to get your outrigger caught on the inside of the gate because that will spin you out of control. And uh, Mori inside of the finish, 2.37.11. And he's going to be inside despite that massive error. Wow, a wonderful ski from Taiki Mori. He leads by over a second, but it would have been more. Now, Heath Calhoun, silver medalist from the Super Combined. And Calhoun skiing the LW12-2 class. He's a bonus at the top, 0.35, and he's found seven tenths. And uh, he is shouting to himself on the way down. Calhoun to take the lead away from Taiki Mori. Calhoun seventh quickest after the first run. He have a spectacular second run charge to catapult himself up the leaderboard. 2.36.08 to surely be beaten, but by how much? Calhoun stops the clock at 2.35.03, the second quicker than uh, Mori. Good skiing from Heath Calhoun. Now, Frederic Francois of France. His advantage nearly two thirds of a second over Calhoun at the top. It's, uh, this is wide in the line. And Calhoun's trying to 20607. Is Francois inside? No, he's outside. So he loses nearly three quarters of a second from the top to the interval. Now, can he find the perfect line through this closing set of gates and overturn that 700th deficit at the finish line? Better from Frederic Francois. His first Winter Paralympic Games. Can he lead, if only for one skier, in the giant slalom 235.03? Yes, he can. That's uh, a good ski on the second part. Finds the 1300. So he leads by six one hundredths of a second. 234.97 now the new time. <laughs> Johan Tabalet of France, the fifth quickest skier from the first run, his advantage, 1.16 seconds over our leader, Frédéric Francois, at the top of the hill. His third Winter Paralympics has never finished on the podium, despite having four Para World Championship medals. Never picked up a uh, Para World Championship medal in this giant slalom, the hardest of all the alpine disciplines to combine the speed and technique and he's very late in the line. But at the interval check, he's leading by 0.66. So he's lost half a second of his advantage in the top half of the run. He too, he's having a little chat with himself as he negotiates these gates. Skiing in uh, the LW12-1 class and uh, struggling near the end here oh just keeps it under control now 234.97 will he be inside have the line errors cost him oh seven one hundred Francoise improves it by six one hundreds Tabale by seven he leads 234.9 now Georg Kaita of Germany, the next to ski, LW101 class. So skiers in this sport class have no or minimal trunk stability, for example, due to spinal cord injuries or spina bifida. They therefore rely mainly on their arms 
to maneuver the Sitski. Now, Kreiter's advantage over Tabale at the top, one and three quarter seconds. So a big, big gap between the fastest four and the rest of the field. Now. Kreiter. He waits for Tabale's strip time. It's one. 205.48 and 1.56 so he's grown it by oh no 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 gonna say grown it by half a second but Kreite is down and uh, well, that's one of his teammates Annalena Forster who competes in the women's sit ski what's happened here oh it just gets bounced and caught the left edge so Kote from a position of fourth with an outside chance of a podium finish comes to grief and disappointment clear to see. So the fastest three then from the first run. Roman Rabble who already has two bronze medals to his name at these Paralympic Winter Games from the slalom and the super combined. Can he add a third medal? The 22 year old Austrian is on the edge here. First Winter Paralympic Games. In the LW12 1 class. The skiers are normal are only slightly decreased trunk function and leg impairments. Now let's see how he goes. Boy, down here. He was wild down here in the super combined, but managed to keep it together. And he's doing brilliantly. Super ski. 0.97 of a second. Still in front. He's lost a lot of his advantage over Francois. But he still has nearly a second. So, Roman Rabel to secure himself a third Winter Paralympic medal if he can finish in front of Tabalek. Tabalek's time, 234.9. Rabel leads 233.31. He found a bucket load of type on the bottom part of the track and he leads and can finish no worse than third. Tabale and Francois on the bubble. They'll have to wait and see what happens with our last two. The fastest two from the first one. Christoph Kuntz of Switzerland now into his second run. His advantage over Rabble, 2.28 seconds. Kunz, the downhill champion from Vancouver. But giant slalom is his best discipline. He leads the overall World Cup standing this season. What can he do here? Aiming for... Switzerland's 50th gold medal in Winter Paralympic history. But he's a tenth of a second down on Rabble. He's lost a lot of time. 2.28 seconds up at the top. He's down by a tenth. He's just skiing far too conservatively. You saw Rabble really going for it down the late jump pitch. And Kuntz, well, has he left himself too much to do? Can he find the speed now, having taken it easy on the top? Or certainly more cautiously on the top. Certainly not easy. But uh, Roman Rebels time, 233-31. Kuntz is going to be close. Is he inside it? Yes, he is by 0.58. Is it a very well-timed run? Or will he kick himself for not putting a little bit more out there, but Switzerland have their first medals of the Alpine discipline here in Sochi. Now, Kuntz just waits for Corey Peters, the quickest skier from the first run. His advantage over Christoph Kuntz, 0.53 of a second Peters getting bumped up into the air as he comes down this late jump pitch this is a, a key part of the track if he can still have the green light at the time check he should be able to ski the bottom half 
quick, quick. Well, he's 0.37 the wrong side of the clock. Kuntz made up enough time. Kuntz made up nearly uh, six tenths of a second. So it's definitely possible for Corey Peters to win New Zealand's first medals of these games. It will be Switzerland's first medals of these games. Which country will celebrate with a gold and which with a silver? The time of Christoph Kuntz, 2.32.73. Corey Peters for the gold, or is it silver? He's outside, it's silver medal for Corey Peters. And Christoph Kuntz of Switzerland is the Paralympic champion. And Corey Peters, quickest after the first run, is sixth quickest in the second, and he finishes with the silver. So now we have skiers 16 through to 31. And the first of which is Dino Sokolovic of Croatia. He's got fourth race here. And so desperately close to a medal in the slalom. Had a healthy lead at the halfway point before skiing out only what three or four gates into the second run. And Sokolovic, well, now we're aiming for uh, top 15 finishes, goes 12th. Good second run from uh, Sokolovic. Now, Ali Velasquez of Mexico, 17th after the first run trying to beat that of Mick Brennan oh big stack big stack well he's had one of those before in these games and he's got another one and his fans won't be able to welcome him down gets bounced and then gets well not much he can do about that the binding releases it's uh, he should be okay. Now he'll need to actually be helped back into his ski. And here come the horse workers now. And Christoph Kuntz knows that he has the gold medal. Corey Peters to his right, our left, the silver. Roman Rabbit once again, picking up a bronze. Anxious faces on the friends and family of Ole Velasquez of Mexico, but he should be okay. So we will have a pause in proceedings. And Velasquez is uh, popped back into his ski. Akira Taniguchi there. He was 22nd after the first run. Here to go. Well, that's good to see that Velasquez is okay to uh, continue down under his own pace. Hirokano of Japan, a double gold medalist from these games in the speed events, here to support his teammates. Young Russian fan, he's had plenty to cheer, isn't he? During these Winter Paralympic Games. Salute! It doesn't seem to matter which sport you watch, Russia are just loving hosting these games. They cannot stop winning. So we're good to get proceedings back underway. 
Deep mark. Dawn. Oh, but Austria. Next to go. Dawn in the LW11 class. The skills have good abilities in the upper trunk, but very limited control in their lower trunk and hips. And the 18th ticket after the first run. And uh, well, Mick Brennan is in 14th spot, and Dietmar Dorm is uh, one and a half seconds slower than Brennan on uh, the first run. But how is he doing on um, run two? Setting up for this uh, very difficult pitch over the late jump. You can hear him shout out as he has to put in an extra turn to control the speed. That would actually stand him in good stead because he won't make the emergency control on this flatter bit and uh, lose more speed. The time of Christoph Kunz is not really relevant because all these gears now are going in descending order of their finishing spot from uh, the First run, drawn 18th quickest, and the time he's looking to beat is set 2.44.88 of Mick Brennan, who's currently in 14th, and he won't do that. He will go into 15th spot, 2.46.83. But Dawn, the 34-year-old, finishes here in Sochi, which he didn't do in Vancouver. Now... Kenji Natsume of Japan, the next to ski, and uh, has some trouble down the lake. Jump pitch, but uh, checks his speed almost a hip check. And uh, he's all out of shape coming into uh, this uh, final combination of gates on the finishing pitch. Another speed skier and a technical skier. And you can have speed in giant slalom, but you need to be a good technical turner. We said before, the hardest of all the disciplines, it's the one which the skiers race most because they would have started out racing GS. And Natsume will slot into 16th place, 248.47 now. And time. 16 place so to get into the top 15 it needs to be quicker than 246.83 now this is Yasmin Bamba of the USA and uh, Natsume currently the one they're all trying to pick off and he was just 22 hundredths slower than uh, Natsume in the first run Oh no, Bamba's down. Gets it back under control. He will still get a finish time if he chooses to ski the gates because he didn't miss anything. And he's down. And his time at 2.50.99 puts him 17th for the time being. Ben Sneesby now of Great Britain in the LW 12-1 class. 21st after the first run. Can he try and get himself inside the top 15? Sneesby then, over that terrain change of the Bears brow. Lovely afternoon here. Now in Rosa Kuta. Whoa, Sneesby gets pitched forward and he's missed the blue control gate. And it won't be a top 20 finish for him. Trying to put on the anchors to make the blue gate, but uh, just over rotates and ends up going backwards. And by the time he brings it back under control, the blue gate is uh, above him on the full line.
So next to go will be Akira Taniguchi of Japan in the LW11 class. Here he is. 128.31. Now the skiers can leave five seconds before, five seconds after zero, so it's not a problem. The clock was at plus one when he broke the wand. Now Taniguchi into this uh, relatively flat section to prepare for the late jump. Here he comes now. The toughest part of the track. Whoa! And another skier who gets bounced out of it. Very soft snow on the side there. As soon as you start losing control or losing ski snow contact, it becomes very difficult indeed. And it looks in his face, it looked like he was going to try and get up and finish, but uh, let's wait and see. No. Well, maybe he is. He's going for his teammates at the bottom of the hill. And the Japan fans enjoying themselves. And that is the last of their skiers. Nine left on the start sheet. Let's see if we get all nine in the start hut. That is uh, Kalalis of Greece, who will be the penultimate skier to go. Suzmiec. Yeah. Uh, pause in proceedings. We've had a couple of fours. Now, here we go then. Maurizio Nicoli of Switzerland, the next to go, and he was 23rd after the uh, first run. And uh, he was three and a half seconds slow, excuse me, than Yasmin Bamba on race one. And do some quick mass on the back of a piece of paper. And he's very wide in the line coming into the Bears Brow section of the course. Caught in the soft snow, but he's back on the hard stuff now. Being encouraged through this flatter section. Now he will get on that right edge as he comes over the red gate onto this final pitch here he goes onto the right and now this bumpy icy steep section of the late jump and he too comes to grief on the late jump pitch it's okay at this point, and gets a little bit of a bounce, and at once the edge loses contact with the snow and it hits the chair, and uh, nothing he can do, but he's okay. And Maurizio Nicoli make his way to the side of the piece. That's another DNF. And now it's the turn of Esat Hilmi Bayandurli of Turkey. Rather anxious, the Turkish 
Merhaba. <laughs> Support down at the bottom of the track. So again, we'll just have to wait until we get the all clear from the peace workers. And we've now got it. Esat Hilmi Bayanderli of Turkey. The next to challenge. 5.3 seconds slower than Yasmin Bamba. So it uh, looks like Bamba and above are uh, short of a top 17 finish. So that's the uh, spots 18, 19, 20 that are up for grabs here. And Brian Dirty in prime position to be three seconds quicker than the next skier, Eric Plante, and a full seven seconds quicker than uh, the skier after that. So, Bayan Durley of Turkey, who represented the United States of America in the 2006 Winter Paralympic Games. He was 33rd in the GS on that occasion. Didn't get into the United States team for 2010, so decided to uh, return and represent Turkey. But, uh, his He, in 2006, and he's the first Turkish athlete to ski in the Winter Paralympic Games. Now, five seconds slower than Bamba at uh, the top. He has lost another 12 or so seconds in the first part. Uh, the track and he comes into the finish 250.99 comes and goes so Brian Dearly will set the 18th fastest time of the competition and it is 3 minutes and 400 of a second Enrique Plante of Argentina the uh, next to go his first Winter Paralympic Games, only racing in the giant slalom. 27.22 off the pace. And he's going to be... He's got to find some time to get in front of Bayern Dearly, who's at just over three minutes on his combined time. Plante now looking for 18th or 19th position it's going to be 19th Prince the winner 232.73 Plante will get to the end and he stops the clock 305.65 congratulations to him a finish at his first Winter Paralympic Games and his supporters going wild in the stands Rafael Suzmiec of Poland now. 238.58. That's uh, 34 seconds off the pace. So he needs to. Uh, he was five seconds slower than Plante. So this is for 20th position. If he gets down, probably will do enough to uh, finish 20th. Plante's time has come and gone, so Suzmic will set the 20th fastest time on the competition. 3.14.44. Ulrich Niebold of Denmark, 38 years of age. The flag bearer for Denmark at the opening ceremony, his first major competition. How will he fare on this really difficult pitch? And the late jump, well, similar to the first run, just uh, 
Surgeon on the side of caution. Oh no. And he gets too wide, upended, and he is down and out of the Giants' Sutherland. I think the way was to say he's okay. Nice and high, but then he, yeah, he caught an edge, and that's what put him too wide in the turn. No way back, especially when you hit a gate. So they'll uh, need to replace that and get him up. Look how the snow just gathers on the downside of the side slippers. Probably going to have to bring some spare blue poles that might be a bit quicker than trying to walk those back up. Gal Jakic of Slovenia waits. Round to Holmgrensen of Iceland will be the final skier. Down, there's only four remaining. Nivold's okay, and uh, the poles are back up. Well, they need to be, and they'll be put into the ground. So with four still to come, Who is Russian? Nikolai Shivalov, who will be the next to go. Skiers from the visually impaired category. So like it, picking up a silver there. But set. Uh, here we wait for Nivol to uh, make his way out of harm's way. And a shuffle Huber of Germany four times the gold medal winner here in Sochi. The New Zealand fans enjoying the music. They will be celebrating a medal a little later on. So we're ready to get things back underway. Four to come. Nikolai Shivalov, Gal Jakic. Nathimos Kalalas and Johan Tort Holmgrensen. The first is Nikolai Shivalov, 28th quickest after the first run, 141.94. Two seconds slower than Rafael Suzmic, who's currently in 20th position. So a chance for Shivalov if he uh, throws caution to the wind. Shivalov in the LW102 class. Uh, skiers that have no or minimal comfortability, for example, uh, due to a spinal cord injury or spina bifida, and they rely mainly on their arms to manoeuvre the sit ski. So here is the Bears Brow terrain change. As it fall away sharply to the skiers right, it's also dragging you out towards the skiers left as you make that turn. Shivalov then setting himself up for a steep late jump pitch. A little speed check coming in now. Oh, there on these very, very difficult icy turns. Oh, just gets pitched forward a little bit, but still hanging on in there. Does well, survive. Now, 
40 seconds off the pace. So his match was say 3.97 off at that point. So Shivalov won't be overtaking Suzmich in 20th position. I want to get to the bottom and hear the roar of the home crowd. We start to ramp up the noise in the finish area. Here comes Nikolai Shivalov. 3.14.44 is 20th. He will go 21st and Shivalov finishes. Well done. His first Winter Paralympic Games. And he's 21st in the giant slalom. And he enjoyed it. I'm sure he did. Now, Gajakic of Slovenia in the LW12-1 class. Skiers with normal or only slightly decreased trunk function and leg impairments fit into this class. Skiers with leg impairments in sport class LW1-4, to which is actually in the standing category, often also fit this sport class. So uh, that means they can choose if they want to be sitting or standing in the beginning of their careers. And Jakic has had equipment failure. Just got bounced out in the rut. We've seen a couple of skiers have that happen to them. Well, he's back in, and there were two to come. Thimios Kalaris and then Jan Tor Holmgrensen. So, here we go then. Epimos, the next to go. With number 112. There's no lack of fun in the finish area. So the penultimate racer on day eight of competition is uh, Epimos Kalaris of uh, Greece. Now what can he do here on this second run? Winner of silver medal at the Summer Paralympics in discus from the Athens Games in 04. Just making sure of these top turns. As he comes into this flatter section uh, between the Bears Brow and the Lake Jump. time that he needs to try and get inside is uh, 322.44 but uh, uh, that would mean he'd have to make up some 11 seconds from the first run so it's uh, not going to happen. Solaris just picking the line down this very steep section and uh, now he can let it run out and he's uh, 54.02 down at the First time split. Now, Kalalis into the final pitch. 
course winding its way to the skier's left and not down the steep pitch of the lake, uh, the deer jump, sorry, which is the finish of the downhill and the super G. And six skates from home now. Pilates will get a finish. We will stop the clock at over three minutes. He's just celebrating already. Lovely to see. 337.6, 104 off the time of Christoph Kurtz. He goes 22nd. Final skier then on day eight of competition at the Rosakuta Alpine Centre is Johan Tor Holmgrenson of Iceland. He was uh, four seconds off the pace of Kalaris after the first run. So maybe he's just trying to get above him in uh, its rankings. 54.2 was Kalaris's time difference. 54.32 the time difference of Holmgrenson to Holmgrenson. Showing some, a lot more urgency on this second run, having qualified for it. The final skier looking to finish on a high, getting into 22nd place if he can. 30, 3 minutes, 37.6 he's got to beat. He's six gates from home. He's got 10 seconds in which to do it. It's going to be very tight, but Holmgren said we'll get to the end. Will he beat the time of Kalalis? 337.6. No, he'll be outside. He goes 23rd, 338.43. He was uh, some three seconds quicker than Kolaris on that second run, but had too much to make up from run one. So here we are then, the standings after the second run of the men's giant slalom in the sitting category. Christoph Kuntz of Switzerland is the quickest. He wins gold from Corey Peters of New Zealand, who wins uh, silver. And Austria's Roman Rabel picks up the bronze. A 50th Winter Paralympic gold medal for Switzerland. A first Winter Paralympic medal for New Zealand at the Sochi Paralympic Games. A second in Alpine and a third bronze for Roman Rabel here. 45 competitors started the race, 23 have finished the second run. The men's giant slalom sitting category wraps up proceedings on day eight here at the Rosakuta Alpine Center. So the crowd have been treated to some excellent racing here today. And they now wait for the flower ceremonies for all the categories. Mac Marcoux of Canada winning gold for his country in the visually impaired category. Gold also for France and for Switzerland. So a rare day where Russia don't take the top prize in one of the categories. Vincent Gautier Manuel Brilliant two runs from him to secure the gold medal ahead of Alexei Bugayev of Russia. And uh, Marcus Salka of Austria, the bronze medal. And then as we go through the rest of the finishes in the standing category, you see a lot of non finishers and non starters. Quite a high attrition rate. Nearly half the field not finishing. The same can be said in the sitting category. Let's have a look at the final standings in the sitting category. And Christoph Kuntz confirmed as the winner from Corey Peters of New Zealand, Roman Rabble in third. Yeah, and Tabalek just misses out for France. So as I say, 23 of the 45 starters managing to get to the bottom of the second run. Dietmar Dorn rounds off the top 15.
Right. Right, we're just going to prepare for the flower ceremonies in the finish area. And uh, please stay with us for those. They will be coming up very shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Alpine skiing men's giant slalom visually impaired. Дамы и господа, церемония награждения победителей и призеров горные лыжи, гигантский слалом, мужчины в классе слабовидящие. The flower ceremony for the men's giant slalom visually impaired category and they are led out by Valerie Red Kuzabov and his guide in the middle is Matt Marco of Canada and at the back Jakob Kraka of Slovakia another brilliant race in the visually impaired category and once again Russia find themselves on the podium. The medals will be presented by Mr. Miguel Sagara, governing board member of the International Paralympic Committee. Mr. Miguel Sagara by Mr. Georgi will, uh, Kobilianski, do the Vice President the of the Sochi 2014 Organizing Committee. Medali Vruchayet. Господин Мигель Сагара, член правления Международного Паралимпийского комитета, в сопровождении господина Георгия Кобылянского, вице-президента Организационного комитета Сочи 2014. Бронз медалист, representing Russian Federation. Бронзовые призеры, представители России, Валерий Редкозубов, Кит Евгений Герой. So Valerie Redkuzbov steps forward for a third time to pick up a bronze medal. And after two golds in the slalom and super combined, it wraps up what has been a brilliant Alpine program for him. It's a 14th medal for Russia in the Alpine disciplines. And well, for Kuzabov and his guy, Evgeny Gedoev, have been brilliant throughout the Alpine disciplines. Congratulations to them on their third medal at the Sochi Winter Paralympic Games. Silver medalist representing Slovakia. Серебряные призеры, представители Словакии. Jakub Krako, Git Martin Motika. Whoa, this could go horribly wrong. The uh, silver medalists for the men's visually impaired giant slalom is Jakub Krako of Slovakia and his guide, Martin Motika. A sixth medal for the Slovakian men's team. He was first in the men's Super G. He was second in the giant slalom. A great performance by him, um, Martin Motika. They are the silver medalists in the men's giant slalom visually impaired category. Gold medalist and Paralympic champions representing Canada. Золотые медали и звания чемпионов Паралимпийских игр завоевали представители Канады. Mark Marco, Keith, Robin, Femi. Mark Marco and Robin Femi in their first Winter Paralympic Games together step onto the top step of the podium to pick up the gold medal. A second gold for Canada in the Alpine disciplines. A third medal for Matt Marco and Robin Femi after bronze in the downhill and the super. G. He now has the top prize 
A brilliant performance by him and his guy, Mac Marku and Robin Femi are the gold medalists in the men's giant slalom visually impaired category. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you're able for the National Handsome of Canada. And now we will have the National Anthem Dames of Canada. Господа, прошу всех встать, если это возможно. Звучит государственный гимн Канады. An emotional moment for Mac Marku and, and Robin Femi, the Paralympic medalists for the men's giant slalom visually impaired category. Mac Marku of Canada, the gold, with Robin Femi, his guide, Silver Jakob Krakow, and his guide, Martin Motika. And the bronze medalist for Russia. Another Russian medal goes to Valery Rekuzubov and his guide Evgeny Galoev. And they are led from the field of play by Gorogi Koblyansky, the uh, vice president of the local organizing Woo! committee, and Miguel Sagara, the IPC governing board member. Congratulations to all three athletes and their guides on their medal winning performances.
Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Alpine skiing men giant slalom standing. Дамы и господа, церемония награждения победителей и призеров. Горные лыжи, гигантский слалом, мужчины в классе стоя. The flower and medal ceremony for the men's giant slalom in the standing category. And leading them out onto the field of play, Marcus Salke of Austria in the middle, Vincent Gauthier Manuel, and up the back as he has been for every other ceremony in the Alpine in this category, Alexei Bugayev. Brilliant performance by the Vincent Gauthier Manuel. By Mr. Lee Sok Ray, Mayor of Pyeongchang City, accompanied by Miss Silvana Mestre. The medal presenter, the mayor Jefferson. of Pyeongchang, Lee Sok Ray. And the Gospodin flowers Lee will be presented Mer by Silvana Mestre of Spain, the IPC Alpine Skiing Chair. Председателя Международного Паралимпийского Комитета по горнолыжному спорту. Бронз медалист, representing Austria. Бронзовый призер, представитель Австрии, Маркус Залхер. So Marcus Salke of Austria steps forward to the acclaim of the crowd for his bronze medal in the giant slalom standing category. He already has two golds from previous competition. The downhill on day one and the super G on day two. And he wraps it up with a third medal of these Winter Paralympic Games. A bronze here in the giant slalom. He's the World Cup leader in the giant slalom category, but he settles for bronze here. A ninth Alpine medal for Austria at these Winter Paralympic Games. Silver medalist representing Russian Federation. Серебряный призер, представитель России, Алексей Бугаев. Алексей Бугаев steps forward once again, the fifth time he's been on the podium in five races. The 16-year-old really is the pin-up boy of Russian Alpine skiing. Magnificent performance by him. A 15th Alpine medal at these Paralympic Games for Russia. A fifth for Bugayev. Third in the downhill, second in the Super G. He wins the slalom and the Super combined, and he gets another silver in the giant slalom to go with the silver he won at the Para World Championships in uh, La Molina last year. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing France. Золотую медаль. И звание чемпиона Паралимпийских игр завоевал представитель Франции Винсент Готье Мануэль. Винсент Готье Мануэль with his trademark celebration. Third in the downhill, second in the Super G. He finally gets a gold medal around his neck in the giant slalom. The para world champion in giant slalom. He's now the Paralympic champion in the giant slalom. A first gold medal from the Alpine disciplines for France in the men. And he has the full set. Congratulations to Vincent Gauthier Manuel. Gold in the men's giant slalom standing category. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you're able for the national handsome of france now we have the national anthem of france встать, если это возможно звучит государственный гимн франции
Ladies and gentlemen, the Paralympic Middle East. Дамы и господа, победитель и призеры Паралимпийских игр. A brilliant competition won by Vincent Gauthier Manuel. Alexei Bugayev pushed him all the way, but Gauthier Manuel, quickest in both the runs, a deserved winner of the giant slalom in the standing category. Alexei Bugayev, well, he'll be around for many years to come in the standing category. 16 years of age, five medals. Vansang, Gauthier Manuel, the full set from Sochi and a three medal haul as well for Marcus Salka. Congratulations to all three. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Alpine skiing men giant slalom sitting. Дамы и господа, церемония награждения победителей и призеров. Горные лыжи, гигантский слалом, мужчины в классе сидя. The victory ceremony for the men's giant slalom sitting category the last medal in the men's alpine events to be decided and they are led on to the field of play by Roman Rabel of Austria in the middle Christoph Kunz of Switzerland and at the back Corey Peters of New Zealand a fascinating final run Kuntz was 0.53 down after run one and there was a 
whole second swing between him and Peters for, from 0.53 down. He won by a margin of 0.47. The medals will be presented by Miss Rita Valdrie, governing board member of the International Paralympic Committee, accompanied by Mr. Dmitry Gudunov, Executive Vice President of the Sochi 2014 Organizing Committee. Medals are presented. So the medals will be presented by Rita Van Driel of the Netherlands, IPC governing board member. Сопровождение господина Дмитрия Годунова, старшего вице-президента организационного комитета Сочи 2014. Bronze medalist representing Austria. Бронзовый призер, представитель Австрии Роман Рабл. Роман Рабл comes forward for the third time at these Winter Paralympic Games to pick up a bronze medal. Bronze in the slalom, bronze in the super combined. He now has a hat trick of bronze medals Thank you. in the men's giant slalom sitting category. A 10th medal at these Alpine Paralympics for Austria. Always a powerful you, team. Thank you, in thank the you. Alpine disciplines Woo! and so they have proved to be once again congratulations to Roma Rabel on another bronze medal winning performance silver medalist representing New Zealand серебряный призер представитель Новой Зеландии Кори Питерс Кори Питерс smiles as he hears his country and his name announced a first winter paralympic medal for new zealand at these games it's only their second in alpine para alpine skiing history to go with adam hall's gold from vancouver but now the moment is for cory peters of new zealand a wonderful performance by him he led after the first run but couldn't quite find the same sort of line and speed in run two. But he'll be delighted with that silver medal. Congratulations to Corey Peters of New Zealand. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing Switzerland. Золотую медаль. И звание чемпиона паралимпийских игр завоевал представитель Швейцарии Кристоф Кунц. Кристоф Кунц wheels himself to the top step of the podium and in doing so wins Switzerland's 50th winter Paralympic gold medal in all sports. It's a first for Switzerland at these Winter Paralympic Games. The downhill champion from Vancouver in 2010 is the giant slalom champion in 2014. He leads the standings in the World Cup in the giant slalom and he's taken that form or brought that form to Sochi and he is the men's giant slalom sitting Paralympic champion. Ladies and gentlemen, so with the medals and flowers now for the national handsum presented we have the national anthem of switzerland прошу всех встать если это возможно звучит государственный гимн швейцарии
Ladies and gentlemen, it's the been a while, Middle East. but it's finally Dame arrived. Gaspada. The Swiss the national the anthem plays out Paralympic as they win Iger. a uh, gold medal at these Alpine skiing games. And now Corey Peters and Roman Rabel will come round and join Christoph Kunz on the top step of the podium. The three medalists from the men's giant slalom sitting category. Christoph Kunz taking the gold. Corey Peters, the silver. And Roman Rabel, the bronze. The sheer joy of all three men as they look down at the reward for all their hard work and their dedication to their sport. Roman Rabel, a third medal at these games, but for Christoph Kunz and Corey Peters, it's a first for them. It's also a first for their respective countries. A landmark moment for Switzerland and Christoph Kunz. Congratulations to Corey Peters and New Zealand on their silver medal as well. So that concludes the victory ceremonies for the men's giant slalom categories. Visually impaired sitting and standing. What a day we have had. What drama we have witnessed at Rosa Kuta in the Alpine Centre. Let's remind ourselves of some of the highlights from day eight of competition in the Alpine skiing. Well, a fantastic day of competition at Rosakuta. It's joy for Canada and Mac Marco in the visually impaired category. Joy for Vincent Gauthier, Manuel and France in the standing category. And Christoph Kuntz with that landmark gold medal for Switzerland, their 50th of, in Winter Paralympic history his, uh, and his country's first of these games in the sitting category. New Zealand also come up with their first Winter Paralympic medal here in Sochi, their second ever in Alpine competition. But the sun shines as we look down on Rosa Kuta on yet another fantastic day of competition. I do hope you hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Bye bye and thank you very much for joining us.